Let us continue the MCQ discussion. Welcome to the fourth session of the pathology MCQs. Let us have a first question here. Chemotaxis refers to which of the following? So what is chemotaxis? Prophylaxis of WBCs to keep themselves safe. Migration of WBCs away from site of injury. Phagocytosis of WBCs involved in inflammatory process. Migration of WBCs in tissues towards the site of injury. What options do you think correct? What is chemotaxis? Yes, the answer is it is the migration of WBCs. The WBCs, especially it's the neutrophils, go towards the site of injury. So that is chemotaxis. It is chemo. It is a chemically mediated. It is all chemical mediators of inflammation that will play important role in chemotaxis. They are the one which will attract the neutrophils from the peripheral blood to the tissues to the site of injury to the site of say bacterial product toxin so that is chemotaxis we have other options prophylaxis of wc to keep themselves safe now wc will try to fight they will not uh, no, go away they will not hide during the inflammatory process migration of wc is away from site of injury now it is a very funny choice phagocytosis of wbc's of involved in the inflammatory process no chemotaxis is not phagocyte it's a totally entirely different phenomena diabetes refers to which of the following so you should know what are the definition of chemotaxis what is the meaning of diabetes movement of neutrophils towards chemotactic agent attachment of neutrophils like pavement along the endothelium engulfment of foreign body by stretching pseudopodia cell walking across endothelium so what is the meaning of diapodesis yes the correct choice is it is a cell walking across the endothelium what is the other name for diapodesis transmigration that is the neutrophils will walk across the endothelial cells by digesting the collagen containing basement membrane they have an enzyme collagenase enzyme so by that enzyme they are able to cross the basement membrane thick basement membrane of the endothelial cells so cell walking across the endothelium is the diapodesis movement of neutrophils towards the chemotaxic agent the first choice that indicates it's a chemotaxis that is the definition of the chemotaxis attachment of neutrophils like a pavement along the endothelium so that's a pavementing of the neutrophils that is a second phenomena MRP again you remember margination rolling pavementing so that's a phenomena of that is the neutrophils will follow engulfment of foreign body by stretching pseudopodia that is nothing but phagocytosis so the answer is cell walk across the endothelial surface next question which of the following is opsonizing agent what is opsonization coating of the microbe so that it becomes very tasty for the phagocytic cells so phagocytic cells will identify the opsonized bacteria more easily than the non opsonized bacteria so what are the opsonizing agents so that is a question here we have options complement c3a c5a c3b c5b to c9 and igm what is the choice correct choice yes remember c3a c5a we call it as anaphylotoxins so c3b should be the answer right so c3b and immunoglobulin also one of the immunoglobulin that is igg is again opsonizing agent here the choice is igm so that should not be the correct choice what is this c5 to c9 c5b to c9 is called as mac what is that membrane attack complex so that's the one which will cause the that attacks the membrane and makes the cells to die the infected cells especially in the bacterial infections so correct option is the c3b remember my friends c3a c5a are the anaphylotoxins two opsonizing agents we have in our body c3b and the igg and mac is c5b onwards to c9 that particular complex is called as membrane attack complex next question most efficient bactericidal agent among following is options cationic basic protein lactoferrin lysozyme reactive oxygen species so which is the most efficient bactericidal so remember there are two types of 
killing the bacteria mechanisms in our body one is oxygen dependent killing mechanism the second is oxygen independent killing mechanism so it is the oxygen depending mechanism which are very important they act as a bactericidal so lactoferrin and lysosomes are oxygen independent type of killing they are not very effective as such what is the first option that is cationic basic protein what is that it is the chemical substance again released by eosinophils so whenever there is a parasitic infections allergic reactions there will be eosinophilia so cationic basic protein is uh, actually bactericidal but it's more of the time it is a parasitic infections that plays the important role so the correct answer is reactive oxygen species formation so the free radical mediated bactericidal effective that is the most effective mechanism of killing the bacteria which of the following is true statement so we have four sentences here all acute inflammations will lead to chronic inflammation all chronic inflammations will be followed by acute inflammation third choice all acute inflammations will heal by resolution fourth most of the chronic inflammations will heal by fibrosis so what is the correct choice you should remember my friends what will happen to the acute inflammation what is the consequences of acute inflammation and what will happen to the chronic inflammation remember one point inflammation goes hand in hand with the repair repair in the sense repair by fibrosis have a look at the cho first choice all acute inflammations will lead to the chronic inflammation no most of the acute inflammatory process will resolve they will resolve they will heal by themselves or with the uh, treatment what you give most of the acute inflammations will resolve completely all chronic inflammation will be followed by acute inflammation no for example most of the autoimmune reactions they will have a chronic course starting from the first phase itself and inflammations like tuberculosis they do not have any acute inflammatory process a precursor acute inflammatory process they will have they start as a chronic inflammation by themselves so certain bacterial infections certain fungal infections fungal infections they do not have acute episodes so they are all chronic so it takes a weeks or months to develop these inflammatory reactions so that's not true that all chronic inflammations will be followed by acute inflammation no there are certain group of chronic inflammations which will start as a chronic without a prior uh, uh, acute inflammation all acute inflammations will heal by resolution no there are a chance that acute inflammation even can go for fibrosis it can go for chronic inflammation so so many things can happen so the the d choice is the most appropriate right most of the chronic inflammations will heal by fibrosis yes the most of the chronic inflammations will heal by fibrosis is the true statement among these next question we have a clinical scenario here within few minutes following a bee sting bite a 37 year old man develops a marked respiratory stridor and dyspnea and wheezing he also develops a swelling and erythema that is seen in arms and legs an injection of epinephrine helps to reverse the these events and he recovers within minutes which of the following chemical mediator is most important in the pathogenesis of this man's condition so the history itself suggests that he has underwent type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so they are asking about the chemical mediator which is responsible for this particular pathogenesis options nitric oxide bradykinin histamine tumor necrosis factor what do you think the correct choice read about all the types of hypersensitivity reactions then you will come to know that which cell is important for which hypersensitivity reaction remember the culprit in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is the mast cells what we call modified basophils the same basophils when they enter into the tissues we call them as mast cells so they are the one which are responsible for four a's type 1 hypersensitivity classically anaphylaxis asthma atopy then allergy all these four a's the classical example of the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so here anaphylaxis history is given so you have to think about mast cell and the chemical mediator released by mast cell what is the chemical mediator most important chemical mediator is the histamine that is the one which is released by the mast cell so the answer should be c yes it is the answer histamine is the important chemical mediator released by the mast cell 
Nitric oxide is vasodilator. Yes, that's also important uh, to cause variety of adverse effects, but it is not uh, having much of the role in the type 1 hypersensitive reaction. Bodyconin, what is that? It is the uh, end product of the kinase system, and that's the one which causes actually the pain. Tumor necrosis factor is the one of the uh, chemical mediator, most importantly, it is the one which is responsible for systemic uh, reactions, what we call acute phase reactants. We call TNF as acute phase reactant, that is the one which causes fever in most of the time. Remember, tumor necrosis factor is a misnomer, it not causes tumor necrosis as such. This is the one which is most again, uh, you know, involved in the inflammatory process. It is one of the important acute uh, phase reactant. So, in this particular case, it is a histamine is the answer. Yes, we have a question on bradykinin. Bradykinin causes what? Choice, four choice. Vesocrestriction, pain at the site of inflammation, bronchodilatation, increased vascular permeability. So, what is the action of bradykinin? Indirectly, it is the what is the action of bradykinin? Yes, the correct response is pain at the site of inflammation. Remember, the patients will have a classical signs of inflammation, right? Pallor, the uh, calor, dobot, dolor, and the swelling. What you know, the classical signs described by Celsius. It is the pain which brings the patient to the clinic, right? So the pain is mainly due to the bradykinin. Vasoconstriction is mainly by the variety of uh, leukotrienes. They are the one which will causes the vasoconstriction. Thromboxinato causes the vasoconstriction. Bronchodilatation again. It is mainly the histamine which causes and even decreased vascular permeability that's not the option so bradykinin the most important action is the pain that should be the correct answer which complement is deficient in patient with the pnh what is pnh paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria so what complement is deficient the choices c3 and c5u c3a c5a third choice cd59 and daf Fourth, C5 to C9, MAC, MAC. So, which is deficient in a patient with a PNH? What is PNH? Remember, it is the only acquired hemolytic anemia, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. It is all due to the deficiency of one of these complement systems. So, read the disorders of the complement system. If these complement products are not available, then there is a very much high susceptibility that person can suffer from so many disorders. So, the correct choice is CD59 and DAF. What is the DAF? Decay accelerating factor. That is the one which is deficient in a patient with a PNH. We have one more uh, important uh, complement that cause, cause hereditary angioneuritic edema. What is that? That is again the important complementary product that CD59 also called as membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. So that's the one which is again implicated in a patient with the hereditary angioneuritic edemas. Yes, we have a clinical scenario here again. In an experiment, enterobacter cloaca organisms added to the solution containing the leukocyte. Engulfment and phagocytosis of microbes is observed to occur. Next, a substance is added which enhances the engulfment. Which of the following is most likely to produce this effect? So, what they are asking is uh, some substance is added. After that, the engulfment is enhanced. So, indirectly they are asking the choices are like this here. Complement C3B, NADPH oxidase, immunoglobulin M, glutathione peroxidase. So, this question, if you got confused, the answers are very straightforward, but here you try to analyze what they are asking actually. So, engulfment and phagocytosis of a microbe is enhanced by adding which substance? So, straight away, you have to add the opsonizing agent. Then only there will be a more effective engulfment, more and effective the phagocytosis. So, you know what are the opsonizing agents already have described in the previous MCQ. It is the complement C3B. That should be the answer. Right, NADPH oxidase is not the choice. Immunoglobulin M, it is the IgG actually. Immunoglobulin G is again opsonizing agent. We have the last question here. Acute phase reactions include all the following except options: increased body temperature, increased WBC count, decreased sleep, decreased uptight. What is the answer? Acute phase reactions include all the following except. So remember. What will happen for you whenever you are sick? 
that is the nothing but acute phase reaction so when you are sick when your inflammatory process is going on inside your body what will happen increase body temperature yes you will have a fever that's correct increase wbc count if you send your blood sample for the lab you will see that there is a neutrophilia wbc count has raised more than 11000 yes that's a correct that is a neutrophilic leukocytosis is very important finding in the acute phase reaction decrease sleep decrease appetite so you have left with the two things now decrease appetite yes whenever you have you are sick you don't want to taste anything you don't want to eat anything so decrease appetite will be there but you will feel more drowsy there will be a increased sleep not decreased sleep so answer is decreased sleep that should be the correct answer yes so let us continue in the next session about the remaining uh, interesting questions on the general path thank you